Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video of Geeky Ranjit Explains, I'm going to talk about camera sensors. Uh, this is applicable both for DSLRs and even your smartphones. And think of uh, the sensor on the camera as sort of the most important part of the camera. It's sort of the heart of your camera. And uh, the sensor is the uh, part after the, uh, what do you say, light passes through your lens. The sensor is the part that gathers that light and converts it into the digital format. And uh, this uh, sensor has a lot of uh, pixels on it. And uh, that, for example, let's say if your camera has a five megapixel uh, sensor, that means it's having a five million pixels. That's how you get that me megapixel count. For example, if your camera is a 12 megapixel, that means the sensor has 12 million pixels on it. And uh, these pixels, actually individual pixels, these actually capture the light and pass it to the sensor. And uh, again, you might uh, assume that having uh, more pixels is uh, better because uh, you can, if you have a larger megapixel count, you can actually zoom in a lot more to the picture and it does not pixelate. Uh, for example, if uh, your camera sensor has a 23 megapixel uh, uh, sensor on it and if you take a picture and you zoom in, you can zoom in a lot more compared to a camera that might have just a 12 megapixel uh, sensor. But again, practically speaking, even if you want to print out photographs, a 12 megapixel uh, uh, sensor is more than enough. And yes, having uh, more pixels is good. But again, there is a big con also of uh, having a, what do you say, a lot of pixels crammed because uh, the camera sensor every camera there are different types of camera sensors that used on dslrs and smartphones i'll talk about all those but every camera sensor for example we have APS-C c size sensor on uh, dslrs like this that's the can uh, 550d uh, APS-C uh, c type of sensors that we call and uh, the more pixels you cram on the sensor uh, the pixels have to come closer to each other and again uh, the pixels actually become smaller in that respect and what happens when the pixels get smaller is that the light that is passed uh, to the sensor actually reduces hence with the again this is not a big problem if you have big dslrs like this because the sensor is actually pretty big but when we have uh, uh, smartphones whose sensors are actually very small this can create uh, some problems i'll uh, actually show you a sh uh, chart later on so that you can get a visual idea about the sensor size uh, but again some of the problems uh, that uh, can happen is that less light obviously passes if you have a what is a very high megapixel count and a very small sensor for example that is applicable on smartphones and also there is another problem that happens when you have too many pixels crammed very close to each other is that light bleeding can happen from one sensor to the other other and uh, this can uh, lead to problems and this is actually known as blooming technically so uh, actually packing in a lot of uh, what do you say pixels on a small sensor is sort of counter uh, intuitive also i'll talk about that later also and we have seen that many of the manufacturers earlier for example samsung particularly they were using higher megapixel count on their smartphones but now they have sort of reduced for example if i recall the samsung galaxy s5 used to have 16 megapixel uh, sensor but now the galaxy s7 is just having 12 megapixel uh, sensor but we'll talk about that uh, later on and also there are different types of uh, sensors that are available uh, they are like uh, ccd cmos bsi sensors uh, i won't talk about all those different types of sensors because this video will become very long but uh, to give you a general overview if we have a what do you say a, a sensor with a lower megapixel count for example let's say instead of 23 megapixel let's say 12 megapixel uh, the pixels will be a lot larger in size that way they can pass in more light and also uh, that is better and you won't have that blooming issues but again this is not an issue if you have a big dslr because dslrs are big and they can incorporate actually very big uh, sensors for in fact uh, uh, here is a chart of uh, different types of uh, sensors that you can see on the top we have this uh, 35 mm uh, sensor which is actually used in most of the full frame dslrs 
and uh, for example the Canon 5D Mark uh, 2, 3 uh, or even uh, Nikon D5 etc use uh, this full frame uh, sensor that's 35 uh, millimeter equivalent uh, these uh, cameras are actually uh, very expensive but this is the type of uh, sensor that is used on those expensive full frame uh, DSLRs the advantage of having such a large sensor is that as the pixels will be a lot larger and then also they can cram in a lot of megapixel 20 23 etc because the sensor is so large and as the uh, uh, pixels are not very much crammed they have better dynamic range and also one more thing that uh, happens is that uh, uh, when uh, we raise the ISO uh, that is the sensitivity of the sensor a larger uh, frame camera for like example a full frame or even an APS-C uh, will have a lot less noise compared to uh, cameras that are having uh, what do you say smaller sensors hence uh, uh, cameras with full frame do actually a lot better in low lighting situations apart from full frame then the most common uh, that is used is known as APS-C size uh, sensor these are used with Nikon and what do you say uh, Canon DSLRs their mid-range level for example the 550D the Canon 70D the Canon 80D etc and uh, the Nikons and uh, this uh, actually is slightly smaller compared to the full frame and uh, as the sensor size actually re reduces uh, the image actually tends to actually zoom in so they this is known as the crop factor with the APS-C size C sensor that is used on these uh, common DSLRs the crop factor is varying between 1.5 to 1.7 for example on Canon DSLRs like the 550D 700 750D or even the 7, uh, 7 Canon 70 or 80D uh, the crop factor is 1.6 for example that means on a full frame if you put a lens that is at 50 mm that that might act like a uh, uh, you have to multiply that factor into 1.6 so it will be around 80 mm so uh, the smaller the sensor size the image will be sort of zoom this can be a pro or even can be a con next most popular sensor size that we get after the APS-C size C is the uh, micro four thirds uh, sensor that is used and again the most popular camera uh, that was using this was the mirrorless Canon GH4 a lot of other cameras are also using this uh, micro four thirds and uh, this is actually a lot smaller in size and this has a crop factor of 2x that means a 50 mm uh, lens that is on a full frame camera uh, will zoom to about 100 mm uh, with a, a, a micro four thirds uh, camera and in terms of size uh, the micro four third uh, camera sensor is just one fourth the size of a full frame sensor so as you can see the size is actually decreasing and after this we also have uh, the one inch sensor that is actually used in a lot of bridge cameras and semi-professional cameras these are even smaller than the micro four thirds and uh, again that is the reason uh, these many of the uh, what do you say uh, mega zoom cameras actually use this one inch uh, sensor because you get a crop factor of around 2.7 uh, that means that easily they can zoom in a lot but again as the sensor size is decreasing the low light sensitivity is not that great compared to the sensors found on the uh, what do you say higher end cameras so as you can see the chart look at the top and look at the bottom but again you'll be surprised that the sensors that are actually used on your smartphones are even smaller than the uh, last one that you're seeing that has a surface area of just 25 uh, mm uh, for example uh, look at this uh, chart these are the actual sensors generally used on most modern uh, smartphones forget about the uh, Nokia Lumia 1020 uh, that had a massive sensor for a smartphone but look at the size of the sensors that are actually used on the smartphone because we simply do not have that much physical area left on a smartphone as you can see the camera sensors are very small so again as these camera sensors are very small and packing so many megapixel on such a small sensor can be sort of uh, counter intuitive as I've told you the pixels have to be very uh, close to each other that leads to the sensitivity of the light uh, won't be that uh, great and that's the main reason that we are seeing many of the uh, what do you say leading smartphone manufacturers like example Samsung even pixel is using a 12 megapixel sensor the iPhone 7 is also using a 12 megapixel and they are not going with the 16 or 18 because uh, with the higher megapixel count like 20 or 23 on such a small size the pixels are actually getting a lot uh, smaller 
So again, we can't put very big, uh, what do you say, sensors on the smartphones because of the uh, limitations of the physical size of the smartphones. So what these manufacturers actually do is uh, they put a fast lens. For example, as you can see, the lower the f-stop, the more light it can pass to the sensor. Hence, we find uh, f-stops of around uh, f2 or f uh, even f1.8 and f1.7 on many of the smartphones and that was one of the main reasons that recently that the moto g5 plus that was launched and it's a mid-range android uh, phone uh, does actually a lot better in artificial and low lighting conditions because it can simply pass in a much more light to the sensor another one more thing that is important uh, regarding the sensor is that uh, uh, the sensor also controls the type of autofocusing that your camera can do for example if uh, your smartphone has pdaf that is face detect autofocusing uh, uh, for example i talked about pdaf in one of my earlier videos check out that for more info then the sensor should have those uh, pdaf sensors so that is also one more thing that will be incorporated by the sensor so guys i hope now you have a little bit better understanding regarding the sensors on your camera and always having a higher megapixel count is not the wisest uh, solution if you are having a camera uh, that has a very small uh, sensor again i know the camera sensors is a very broad to uh, topic and there are different type of camera sensors like a bsi cmos ccd etc again uh, i won't cover all those topics in this video because this video will become a uh, very long again do let me know if you uh, like the, this sort of content again if you like this content hit the like button and if you're not subscribed to my youtube channel hit that subscribe button thanks for watching this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video